When I'm up through the night, I can't turn down the noise. Say all the words out of my mind. Hello all, once again welcome back to the Interventionist. Hope uh, you are having a good time and uh, I hope uh, all of you, my dear students, uh, performed equally well in uh, your uh, exams, who have attended university exams and who are given university exams this year. I hope in this tough situation all of you will pass in flying colors. And uh, if it's up to me, I would pass everyone, uh, whomever I could. So, uh, once again, I am thanking you all for your continued support. Our channel has grown from uh, its beginning to now around 650 plus subscribers. I am very thankful for all the viewers who had made this happen. So this, uh, today uh, I have decided to put something which was in my mind for quite some time. I have put a relevant case in the Instagram as well, but uh, nobody has it, they answered it correctly. So here is the thing. So uh, now onwards, whenever I'm getting a good interesting cases, I will be uh, putting into Instagram directly. Please uh, follow the Instagram handle. It won't be that frequent, it will be very relevant case with very good findings which will help you in reporting the cases. So so this is the part one of such series. We will continue doing this if possible. And, uh, and so this is our number one case of this session. So today's objective will basically be three things. One is to discuss one case and uh, I will give a highlight on some tips on CT imaging of brain or any other part of the body and the next major announcement is about uh, the quiz of september session quiz which i'll be uploading the video shortly so uh, be ready and uh, hopefully you will all attend it and uh, you will make it a huge success of course the winners will get prizes and uh, the next uh, we'll go to the case so, so what the case is about is a, it's actually a video which I made about the case. Uh, I'll be showing a CT image, plain CT image of a case. Uh, the patient details are as follows. It's a middle-aged man, known case of glioma, once operated, now presented with recurrence. So we have done, a, we had to do a, he had, to, he had significant symptoms, so the surgeon decided to re-explore. And uh, they have, uh, this images were acquired on uh, post op day one so i'll show you the video images i i only have a short video for that i'll try to loop it but of course you can always go back and re-watch it again and again to see the findings so i'll give you some time before i will uh, move on to the answers so you can uh, give uh, form an answer in your mind okay thank you now to the images. Mama told me for real that there's only one thing you remember from me. Child, when you're out on your own, a million miles from home, feeling the weight of the world on your shoulders. Child, So I hope uh, you have gone through the images. If you want to re-see the images, you can go back and always see it again. So now I will discuss the case now. So what do we have here? So this is actually a post-op image of day one. So you will expect any brain surgery if you do, you will expect so much of collections to happen. And the importance of this case, why it is, it is quite simple, but it is a little bit confusing. 
for most of my PGs, I, you know, I put the question to them, they didn't answer it correctly. So I thought, okay, I'll make a video out of this. So I have just put the key images in this uh, slide here. So wh what is happening here? So, so you should understand two things. One, so there are two different collections. No, actually not two, three different collections. One is in the scalp region that is extra calvaria. The other one is in the intracalvarial space. We have two collections. One is here and the other one is here. So how will you name these collections? That is the question here. So most of my uh, PGs or uh, the ones who have answered in uh, Facebook, they have commented it as uh, SDH and uh, with uh, some SH down here. So I would say they are partially correct and partially wrong. Only very few have pointed out the possibility of an EDH, which is very likely here, especially in the case of an calvarial opening surgery. So remember that. So what do we have here? So you should think like this. So when you when you learn about bleeds, you always know that EDH is a bleed which occurs between uh, your calvaria and the dural line. So it is extra dural hemorrhage. So what we have here is we have an extra dural collection here, which does not have an attenuation of a bleed, which more of a have an attenuation of the CSF here. So in this case, what happens is that uh, there has been a communicating track which is formed postoperatively and uh, which is actually communicating the left ventricle with the extra dural space. So uh, basically the fluid, whatever fluid here, which is of course the CSF, which is tracking and instead of collecting in the subdural space, it is collecting in the extra dural space. So I want all of you to now go back to the images and see it again, how the images it is corresponding or not, so that you can understand what I'm trying to say. So at this point, so this is very important. So now, right now you can understand two things. So we have an air fluid leveling here, which is very common in cases of pneumocatheters, which is very common in intraoperatively, postoperatively, you can develop air within the cavity. It happens. So there is even air in the scalp with fluid leveling here. So one thing you should have noticed here is you have the same attenuation fluid here in the scalp as well. So uh, you might be tempting to think that those are maybe zero. No, actually in this case it is wrong. So this even this is actually CSF. There is a CS. There might have been some amount of CSF leak which had gone outside of the calvaria. This this case when we had followed up in subsequent imaging of day two day three and day four there were no significant increase in the collection in the scalp region so that actually signifies that this was only momentary leak which might have happened during the intraoperative period which i would have tracked here so we were suspecting about a uh, ventriculo uh, cutaneous uh, fistula formation which was not there uh, we have suspect we have raised the doubt of this so the surgeon had followed it okay now coming back to the collection so we have named two collections one in the scalp that is uh, you can classify it as a scalp collection with uh, air fluid leveling the second one is actually an extra dual hemorrhage with air fluid leveling the third one that is the more interesting part here so if you go back to the images again i want you to go back and see the images again so in this case i'll just play the video again one more time so uh, now to the third part, we have already discussed about the subdural hygroma type collection, uh, not subdural, extra dural hygroma type collection, as well as the scalp collection. There is actually an hematoma which is not following the normal physics. If it is in the EDH plane, it would have flowed, uh, it would have formed a fluid leveling like this, like the how the air fluid is made up. But instead of that, it is actually oriented almost parallel to the compressed gyri. So this is actually not in SH, this is actually a subdural hematoma. So, this is how it happens when due to the external pressure by the extra dural collection, it has actually pushed the subdural space medially, and uh, the blood is now tracking in between the subdural space a bit off from the calvarial space. So, this is a unique situation. So, that's why I put this case for a discussion. Further down, when you go down, you can see the Mount Fuji sign caused by the mass effect 
combined mass effect of the collection as well as the air fluid level. Air, air, the pneumocephalus, which is very significant in this case, and, uh, and it is causing significant mass effect. And on the opposite side also, there is a small collection here. This is corresponding to the CSF attenuation. Might be a little bit higher in attenuation, but it is still there. So here also there is air fluid leveling, so pneumocephalus is there on both sides with a small subdural hygroma type collection on the right side as well. So this is the case which I wanted to discuss with you. So now I hope you have understood. So in your reporting such a scenario, you should think about anatomical landmarks and then decide upon how to give it as and which plane the bleed is. So I hope this uh, has covered uh, all details. And any query you have, you can put it in the comments. And uh, I will go to the next set, which is uh, some tips and tricks regarding imaging. Uh, which I thought I will discuss along with this case. So I just wanted to show you uh, some minor tweaks in the uh, window width and other parameter which will enable you to detect bleeds so easily. So this is the one trick I wanted to show you in this session. Essentially I have showed you how it will look in the default window. Now I have, we have a specific window created for bleed detection which I have made it my, myself. So this is how it will look once you put it, put that specific uh, window width and window uh, latitude. So this is how it uh, looks. It's quite easy to pick up that. So uh, you can see how nicely the bleed is being now shown. Hope you all like the tip. And I will specifically put a, a freeze frame or slow move, moving uh, video at the end uh, so that you can copy the window width settings and try it yourself. So right now I am announcing the September session quiz. Will uh, details will be followed up in a followed up video. Just read the description. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do share, subscribe and uh, do continue supporting the interventionists.